Hi, welcome to Understanding Autism, an introductory guide for parents, teachers and therapists to create positive learning, play and social spaces for children with autism spectrum disorder. I'm James Dowson, Australian Paediatric Physiotherapist. Today we're going through four key learning elements to help you support more children. We talk what is autism, the common and less common signs and symptoms, understanding sensory profiles and creating safe sensory spaces, inclusive sport, play and activity, and transitions and activity planning. So what is autism spectrum disorder? Autism spectrum disorder is a neurodevelopmental condition, meaning that it occurs during infancy and early brain development. Most signs and symptoms can occur during infancy and early childhood, and most children diagnose around preschool age. However, children can be diagnosed when they're older in primary school, high school, even adults can be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder as well. Some of these common signs and symptoms don't always mean a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. If you have any questions or concerns, always have a chat with your paediatrician, local physiotherapist or doctor who's familiar with autism spectrum disorder and working with children. Every child is unique and it's important to understand that each child is going to have their own strengths and areas that they need support in. Not all children are the same and we shouldn't be treating them the same. We need to listen and understand who they are and what they need in terms of their development. Some common early signs and symptoms of autism spectrum disorder, particularly for children under three years old, include not responding to their own name, lack of eye contact, lack of sharing, the most fixation on play or the avoidance of play, difficulty reading emotions, understanding social cues and how to interact with either adults or their peers, as well as having challenges with changes in routine and emotional regulation. Every child and person has their own unique sensory preferences and profile. This will often occur during early infancy years and parents can start to know some early signs and symptoms. When it becomes particularly important is when these sensory preferences impact the child's daily life and their ability to independently choose what activities and interactions they engage with. Children tend to be sensory seekers or sensory avoiders, and this can depend on their unique sensory profile and have different sensory needs for different sensory experiences. Sensory profiles involve the five traditional senses, as well as two new senses which are better understood. We have touch, taste, smell, sight, sound, as well as proprioception, which is our body's awareness of where it is in space, and our vestibular system, which responds to our movements. For example, a child may be a sensory avoider of light and loud sound, and so they may seek deep touch or pressure to regulate these feelings their brain is experiencing. Understanding each child's sensory profiles and needs in this way can help us to create more positive learning spaces, where if we know what triggers an intense sensory response, how can we create an environment that can be positive and allow this child to regulate to be able to better engage in learning and play. This can include adjustable lights that can be dimmed, creating sensory spaces where children can have a little bit of a break away from intense noise or sound, giving them movement breaks their body needs some movement to regulate. So some children have challenges with being still for extended periods of time. For children with autism spectrum disorder, a traffic light system can help them to communicate how they're feeling and experience classroom, play and sport. This includes green, yellow and red experiences. Green refers to being in a good sense of regulation, to a happy content. Yellow refers to starting to feel feelings of uncomfortableness and overwhelming, and red is when we need support and where it can become completely dysregulated and need time to find a space to come back to what we were doing. Some children may use a visual prompt to help communicate this, particularly for our children who are non-verbal or have difficulties with their communication. Sometimes it can be a verbal check-in as well, to come in asking how are you feeling? Are we red? Are we yellow? Are we green? And how do we have to either change what we're doing or create a more supportive environment to help regulate our emotions and ourselves? Understanding sensory profiles also helps us guide inclusive play. If children have aversions or a significant challenge with certain sensory profiles, then we can set up play that understands what their needs are and how can we adjust things. For example, for a child who has significant challenge with auditory input, i.e. loud noises, sounds, echoes in a large indoor space, this can be really overwhelming. We can look at alternative spaces, can we play outside, or if these spaces aren't available, how can we make an indoor space more inclusive? Can children be using noise cancelling headphones and we use more visual prompts and communication to allow them to be included in a play and have a positive experience? Autism spectrum disorder can often result in challenges in self-regulation in terms of thermoregulation, are we too hot or cold, thirst, hunger, and where is our energy levels at? Ways we can include supportive play is to having regular check-ins with these children as we're doing play. Do we need a drink? Do we need a break? These things that are automatic for some kids aren't automatic for all kids, so we have to have regular check-ins to help support this. 
For children, when they're learning new play skills, sometimes this can be overwhelming. And if we're having a lot of challenges with not having success at first, children become dysregulated very quickly. That's why it's important to do our traffic light check-ins during play, particularly during these key learning skills. Learning new play and sports skills can be challenging. Often children may not have a heightened sense of where their body's in space, their movement planning and their coordination. It's important to do regular check-in with our traffic light system during play to make sure that children are learning and they're safe, they're comfortable and they have opportunity to practice. If we're becoming dysregulated, we don't want to have a negative play experience. So maybe let's have a check-in, have a little break, come back to the activity. We want all children to be included in active play. It provides numerous social and physical opportunities for development. We just need to be extra sure that we're making environments that are safe and comfortable, as well as understanding each child's unique needs. We often will have conversations with parents to better understand who their child is and have team meetings so that everyone's on board working towards the same goals. Routine and clear communication about the structure of a day can make a big difference in the lives of children with autism spectrum disorder. This can include visual planning charts, which can be included in the classroom, saying what activities are we doing and when. This can help children who need to prepare more when they have particular challenges with transitions. Transitions can refer to any change, whether that's a change in activity, from reading to drawing, a change in play, a change in location, or a change in social setting. It's important that we prepare children with autism spectrum disorder for managing these transitions as this can be tricky. What we can work on is building our transition skills. This involves clear open communication about what is happening, but particularly why things are happening. If we have to go to an appointment, we're going to school, why are we going there? And this can help children better understand what is happening, they can process why, and also it's important to understand and respect any questions they may have and have reciprocal conversation in that we're having active listening, giving children time to process new information. For example, if we're working on a physio session with a child, we'll have a communication board where we'll list the activities that we're gonna do on the day and why. And this can help give the children a sense of control and understanding of what is happening because the world can be overwhelming and there can be huge amounts of input all the time. This can help create structure and organisation in the brain, which can help children with autism spectrum disorder be able to better regulate their emotions, feelings, and engage in future activities. It's important to have conversations about inclusive play and learning. If you've got a new teacher, you're a therapist, or you're a parent who just wants to learn more, make sure you share this video so that more people can be supported to make inclusive environments for all children. I hope you enjoyed today's Understanding Autism and Introductory Guide. If you found today helpful, make sure to share with another parent, a teacher, a therapist, or anyone who might want to learn more about autism spectrum disorder and how to support all children to play, live, and learn in a happy, healthy way. Make sure to subscribe to Adaptive Kids to follow along and learn more. If you have any questions, you can visit our website, adaptakids.com.au, leave a comment below or send us a personal message. Hope you all have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time.